Many of the carbohydrate molecules that we discussed so far are capable of undergoing reducing reactions, reduction reactions, and such sugars are known as reducing sugars. So when we have a sugar molecule, the sugar molecule can exist in two forms, in the cyclic and the acyclic form. In fact, any given carbohydrate molecule exists in a dynamic equilibrium between the cyclic and the acyclic form. And to see what we mean, let's take as an example the glucose molecule. So glucose exists in the cyclic form and we have two anomers. We have the alpha and beta D-glucopyranose as well as our acyclic form, our open straight chain glucose molecule, simply known as D-glucose. So basically, we have an interconversion taking place from our product. Let's say this is the product, our acyclic, to the reacting, our cyclic. Now, when equilibrium is established, we still have the conversion taking place, but the concentration of our reactant, the cyclic, remains constant, and of the product also remains constant. And for this glucose case, as well as many other carbohydrate molecules, this cyclic is the one that predominates. Specifically for this case, we have about 99.95% of this cyclic molecule at equilibrium and only about 0.05% of the acyclic D-glucose. So we only have a very, very tiny amount of this molecule, the acyclic version, actually present at equilibrium. Now, the question is, which one of these versions, the cyclic or the acyclic, can actually undergo our reduction reaction? So it turns out that the more dominant cyclic version cannot undergo a reduction reaction. It will not be reduced by any reducing agent. But this acyclic version, the open straight chain molecule, will be reduced. And that's because on this molecule, we have the carbon-oxygen double bond, while in this case, this carbon-oxygen double bond is basically transformed into a hemiacetal. So this is the hemiacetal version of this molecule here, and recall that hemiacetals do not undergo reduction reactions. So basically, if we want to protect our sugar molecule from undergoing a reduction reaction, we transform it into to the cyclic hemiacetyl version of our sugar molecule. Now, even though we have a tiny amount of this acyclic version of glucose, that tiny amount in the presence of a reducing agent, such as sodium borohydrate, will be reduced. And as this is depleted, as this is reduced, our cyclic version will begin to transform into this version. So by Le Chatelier's principle, if we decrease the amount of product of this acyclic version, this will be shifted to this side. So at equilibrium, our equilibrium of this reaction interconversion basically lies very far to the left side. But as we deplete this, as we use it up, in the presence of, let's say, sodium borohydrate, this will basically shift to the right side and this will interconvert in to this open straight chain acyclic version. Eventually, we're going to use up all of this cyclic because it will all convert into our acyclic form. Now, what exactly is the reaction mechanism by which our open molecule, the acyclic version, undergoes our reduction reaction? So let's use the sodium borohydrate as our example. So sodium borohydrate looks something like this. We have the boron attached to 4H atoms, and so it contains a negative charge. And the sodium, which contains a positive charge, will basically be found in close proximity because we have electrostatic attraction between the negative charge on the boron and the positive charge on our sodium. 
So basically in the first step, because we have this D-glucose that contains the aldehyde group, we have the carbon-oxygen double bond. One of these H molecules, one of the hydride atoms, will basically attack this carbon of the carbon-oxygen double bond, displacing our pi bond and placing it onto this oxygen to form this intermediate in which we have a negative charge on the oxygen. We also form this BH3, the boron that now contains our 3H atoms, and because it no longer contains a uh, negative charge, the sodium, which does contain a positive charge, will now shift and move on to be close next to the oxygen, which contains our negative charge. In the second step, if we have a water molecule in close proximity to this, this will basically act as the base, Lewis base, the protein our water molecule to form this final reduced sugar. So basically we take our reducing sugar, we mix it with sodium borohydride and we produce our reduced product in which this carbon oxygen double bond, the carbonyl group, has been transformed into our alcohol. So we see that when we reduce sugar molecules, we basically transform an aldehyde or a ketone group in the case of ketosis into an alcohol group. Now, any sugar that exists predominantly in its cyclic form will form a small amount of acyclic pro uh, partner. If the acyclic partner contains a carbonyl group, it can be reduced and such reducible sugars are known as reducing sugars. So most sugars can in fact be reduced, but we are going to discuss instances in which a sugar molecule cannot be reduced. 